You are listening to the Crazy Town Podcast, Season 1, Episode 4. Today we'll be discussing what the creepy ginger from my gym is up to, my hatred for self-checkouts, and what some town folk did to stop a Mexican drug lord. All that and more today on the Crazy Town Podcast. One, two, three, three! Hello, hello, and welcome once again to the Crazy Town Podcast. My name is Jonas, and I will be your host as usual. I do want to thank you for listening to our fourth episode of this podcast. It does mean a lot for you to check us out. I do want to jump right into topics today. I wanted to discuss uh, the gym a little bit. Not not gyms or people named gyms so much as like the place you go to work out. Now, I have been going to the gym a few days a week. It's been almost a year now, which is pretty sweet. But when you go to the gym a lot, you, you tend to notice a lot of interesting people there. Now, I am in no means here to hate on anyone. I am not the king of fitness or anything like that. I I love that anyone takes the fucking time to actually go to the gym and work out. That I mean, just getting there is the hardest part. But that doesn't mean that some strange fuckers don't go there. Even crazy people like to work out sometimes. So there's this dude that goes to the gym that I go to, and it's I mean, it's a pretty busy gym. It's I go at like six o'clock at night usually on during the week, so and it's by downtown. So it's pretty fucking slammed when I get in there. And there's this guy and and he's a ginger. I mean, not that I have anything against gingers, even with the soul sucking and the belly buttons and all that. But he he's kind of fucking weird, man. Like, he has this Fu Manchu-type mustache that I'm sure dangles in his food while he eats, so I'm sure that's fucking disgusting. But, I mean, he seems like he's in pretty decent shape. He's an average-sized dude. It's not, like, cut as fuck or anything like that. He's not, like, a pro bodybuilder. But he's there just about every time I go. And the weird part about this dude is when he walks in the door, he's usually wearing boots, And like khaki cargo pants, which is totally what I work out in, or not. And he usually has on like a cutoff shirt or whatever. Now, sometimes when he gets there, he just kind of like paces back and forth along all the weight equipment for a while. Like kind of just peering around at everybody. I don't know if he's like just kind of like staking his claim or like just checking shit out or what he's doing. Sometimes I don't even see him using actual equipment. He, like, stares, he peers, and, I mean, he'll get to it eventually, and he kind of pounds out a quick set or whatever, and then he, like, just goes up and talks to the people at the counter or whatever. So, after I've noticed him there for a little bit, then over the next few weeks, I see this guy there, and he's just kind of always at the tables in the front. Like, there you have probably, I don't know, like six tables up at the front. And he's always on the table in the corner. And he always has his laptop open. And because they have free Wi-Fi at the gym. And I, and I don't know what he's doing. Like, he's just kind of leering at everyone. He's kind of creepy. I'm sure people fucking get creeped out by this dude. Because I, I don't get creeped out by anybody and I get creeped out by this guy. But this all kind of culminated when I went there the last time. And this guy, he was no longer at the back table. He was no longer hiding. But when I walked in, I noticed he had his laptop open and he was kind of in like some dressier clothes. Like he had like a collared shirt on and he was sitting there and he had a big like gallon jug of protein powder sitting in front of him. 
he had some sort of nut butter. I don't know if it was peanut butter or almond butter or whatever. And there was a knife in it sticking straight up. And he had a little plate with crackers. And and then, yeah, like there was all these papers strewn about. I don't know. I may have already said that. But there was papers strewn all about. And when I walked by, I noticed he was watching like fitness videos like on his laptop. Like I don't know. I don't know exactly what they were. I don't know if he was watching supplement videos or workouts or what. So... I'm pretty sure that this dude is not as like slinging roids at this gym because I don't know what else he would be doing. Like it's a, it's like a chain gym. It's not just some dude just doesn't own it and lets people in. So I can't imagine that they're okay with creepy McCreepenstein chilling in the front with like nut butter, like trying to like get all the chicks to come sit down with him and enjoy a fucking nut butter cracker or a, or a protein shake or something. So what I'm thinking is, is he is he is he lures you in with his Fu Manchu because it's like he's like dragging across like his cracker that he's eating. He's like combing the peanut butter like a sand trap, and and he lures you in. And then when you sit down, he starts talking to you about this protein powder. But I don't think it's protein powder. I think it's roids. So he gets the roids, and I don't know if he has it like injectables or if he has like a uh, ones that you orally take or whatever. But I'm pretty sure this dude has a van out in the parking lot and he will take you out there and he will stick it in your ass. Now, not literally, like, in the ass, but, like, like shoot you up in the ass. I'm not talking about penetration. Which, now, he may be down with penetration, too, and if that's what he likes to do, I mean, hey. But if he wants to penetrate a dude while giving him a roid shot, I mean, that's up to him and the dude. That's their business. But I think that it should be the gym's business that he's creepy and he's like ogling everyone while he's sitting up there. Now, I haven't validated any of these concerns, but I do think that they are pretty accurate to what is actually going on. Now, I will definitely decide to keep to monitoring this situation because I'm sure it will be ongoing as I go to this gym. But before I know it, he'll probably like, there'll be a missing girl from the gym who like was last seen with fucking the ginger assassin or Fu, Fu Man Ginger, fucking whatever you want to call him. But until that time, I'm going to keep my eye on Cargo Pant Carry and see what happens with him. Now, I will have an update on a future episode of the podcast, I hope, or maybe I'll be dead and I won't be able to do it. But if I do die and I'm not found and I have injectable fucking holes in my booty... You may want to check out the Ginger Assassin at the gym. And that may be what happened to me. We'll be right back on the Crazy Town Podcast. And welcome back to the Crazy Town Podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Jonas. And I want to talk a little bit about self-checkouts. It's something that's became quite a bit more plentiful over the last few years. They used to be very sporadic. Now, I fucking hate them. Now, but I don't hate them all the time. Now, if you have a couple items and you're trying to bypass lines of doom, I mean, hell yeah, very useful. If you have two items, whatever. Also, if you live in a city that uses plastic bags, great. But I don't. I live in a city where they don't use plastic bags and you have to bring your own bags to the store, which is great for the environment, but not so great when you forget your bags and have to use a self-checkout. Now, all that put aside, just just talking about the self-checkout by itself. Now, the idea, great. People who don't like to talk to other people make small talk. That is like their godsend. You can get through. You don't have to talk to a weirdo who's talking about how long their shift is and how they hate their boyfriend and, you know, how they got finger banged in the bathroom or whatever. Now, that part is great. I don't like talking to all these people either. But when you use them, it's not really all that efficient. Every time I've tried to use them, the damn sensors go crazy. It's... Too many items are in the bag. This this shit weighs too much. Are you not going to put this in the bag? Then you hit the button. Then it wants to go off. Then it says, please see store associate. So that wouldn't be a problem. So I'm like, oh, hey, let me grab the store associate. 
And you turn around, there's one associate with 15 goddamn checkouts. So guess what they're doing? They're helping the other 15 people who also have the same error and can't move on in their damn checkout because you bought a bundle of socks that was on sale and they have to come over and verify the fucking price. So I don't know how that makes them any sort of useful, but... You know, since every person in the entire place it has an issue every five seconds, I would think that run, being the person in charge of the 15 self-checkout lines is probably the worst job in the store. Because you're helping everybody who is a goddamn moron use these machines, whether it's user error or the machines just suck or whatever. So every time I use them, I just want to, like, throw everything I have on the floor and just fucking walk out. So I'm going to tell you a story about fucking why I hate them so much. So I go I go to Walmart, right? This is, like, the mecca of self-checkout. So they have, like, 30 of these bitches in a little corral. And, of course, one person watching them, right? So I go in and it's it's kind of late. We decide to go grocery shopping late at night because we're bored. We go at like, I don't know, 11 or 11, 11.30, some shit. So we go in and everything seems normal. We go around, we buy our stuff, we do whatever we got to do. We go to check out. I think it's like 12.15 at night. And I don't know if this happens in your town or if anyone's ever fucking noticed, but at 12 o'clock, Walmart stops having human cashiers completely. There's not one human in that bitch except for the one person in charge of 15 checkouts. So me and my wife have to go over and self-checkout. Great. Just going to be fucking fantastic, right? So I hate using self-checkout when I have four items. We had an entire week's worth of groceries, and it's like $200 worth of shit. We have all sorts of stuff. So I immediately look at my wife and I'm like we should just come back tomorrow and and she's like you want to come back and redo all of the grocery shopping so we don't have to use self checkout and I'm like you are absolutely correct I know what's going to happen I know how I'm going to feel I know what is going to go on when we try to do this so we're using the self checkout a couple minutes later and of course there's like there's like 30 other people in line and they're all using the self checkouts. Now they actually do have two attendants working the self checkout. But one of them is like emptying cash out of one of the registers, which took the entire time we were self checking out. So there might as well have just been one person and there were one register short because fucking Dinkle Tot was fucking in the goddamn shit trying to pull all the cash out rather than letting people just shop. So, of course, as per usual, you know, we end up with, like, I don't know, we have, like, what would be the equivalent of, like, six or eight bags of groceries? You know what I mean? There's, I mean, there's, like, for four basically adults. So we start going through all this shit, and it is, like, a plethora of errors. It was the most difficult thing I had ever had to do. It was, like, ring up a box of rice, go to put the shit in the damn bag. It's like, do you want to not bag this item? I hit yes, bag the item. Then guess what? Attendant, please come check. Too many items in basket. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. So then, of course, she's using the other fucking 30 people in line who are all having problems. This goes on. I think it took us 45 minutes to check out because we had to constantly call over the attendant to fix shit on sale and stuff it said that we had in the basket that wasn't in the basket. It was a goddamn nightmare. This is where the entire hatred came to like culmination because I knew that I hate these goddamn checkouts. Now, another little side story. We're at Walmart again at 1230 doing something. We're shopping for whatever. And I go, and we had been around Christmas shopping. So I'd use my credit card quite a bit at a few different stores. So we get through, and we're on our very last transaction. We had to set, do this stuff in separate transaction because it was uh, for, for some work stuff. So I get to the last one. Cards declined. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, you son of a bitch. And I know the card isn't declined. I immediately know what happened because this has happened to me before. So I don't know. Have any of you ever tried to use your credit card, whether it's as you're traveling across the country or you're using it for numerous transactions within a day and you end up the fucking bank blocks your card for fraud protection? Now, I think that fraud protection is actually a very 
useful thing. Very good. I mean, like, if somebody steals my shit and is starting to use it all over the goddamn country, I want them to freeze the damn car. But they have to have some sort of secondary, like, backup shit. So I'm standing in line at Walmart at 12.30 at night. There's, like, 20 people in line. And I have to call the goddamn bank to unlock my card. So you would think that that you call the bank because they just froze your damn card and you would get right through. And I actually do. I get a girl on and I go, hey, blah, 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 you froze my shit. I really need to get it un- unstuck. And she's like, okay, thanks. Let me get you the fraud department. Click. So before I even got to ask her if she saw a hold on my shit, she sends me to fraud. I was on hold with fraud for 17 minutes in line at Walmart waiting for this bitch to unlock my card so I could do a $100 fucking transaction on my credit card. Do you know how long it took to get it unlocked once I got the bitch on the phone? 30 seconds. I had to verify my information and she unlocked it immediately. That is the most broken fucking process and mix that shit with a damn self-checkout. It was like the epitome of just hassle. It was, it made my brain melt. Like I just wanted to smash my face off the self-checkout screen just because Everyone was looking at me like I was an asshole, like I did it on purpose, or I'm like trying to call the bank, like, I know my car shouldn't be declined, I know I got $20 on there, I just bought some donuts. No, this was like a fucking credit card, it had plenty of goddamn money, but the fraud protection thing made me look like an asshole. You know what, fuck you, fraud protection, and Walmart, and I'm all all over the place about this fraud and Walmart and whatever. Anyways, self-checkouts, terrible, they are useful, but I hate them. But I love them if I only have like two things. But I hate them if Walmart gets their shit all crossed up and it's midnight and I got to go in line and wait for three hours because it's crazy town. I'm going to take a break for a second so I can collect my thoughts about this damn nightmare of a situation. And we will be right back on the Crazy Town Podcast. Where am I? And welcome back to the Crazy Town Podcast. Thank you for keeping with us over the break. I want to touch on a story now that I thought was actually pretty damn cool. It's in regards to a uh, thing that happened in Mexico. Uh, The city is Totolapan. I don't know. I'm probably saying that wrong. But uh, T-O-T-O-L-A-P-A-N. Totolapan. Now, there's a, a gang lord there. I guess his name is El Taquilero. El Taquilero. Yes. I'm sure I'm probably saying that wrong, too. But basically, it comes out to the tequila drinker, because I guess this dude gets drunk all the time, and he causes a ruckus in the city, and you know how Mexico is. It's just fucking crazy with the cartels and the drug lords. So, this dude's gang, the Taquileros, uh, allegedly uh, like kidnap like a bunch of people of the city. So they want to, like, extort them. They want to, you know, get ransom, whatever. And, like, a lot of these they just accuse of them of supporting, like, a rival gang. That's how they justify it or whatever. And, like, they need justification. They fucking shoot people and dump them out of the back of a truck on a freeway. Like, they really need any sort of justification of why they're stealing people from the street. So in this town, I guess this had been happening for a while. I, I don't know what it was, but... They decided to take, like, a local, like, construction engineer. I guess he must have been pretty popular. Uh, I had the guy's name somewhere. I don't know what happened to it. But, so, basically what happens is after they steal this dude, this uh, engineer guy, a few dozen men show up in the street talking about how they're, like, mercenaries or some shit. And they're, like, waving, like shotguns and hunting rifles and they're like carrying banners and saying that they're defending their city and their vigilantes right so now now i i can't say that this probably hasn't happened before like i'm sure that there's been an uprising like the people of the city were like oh we're really sick of joe schmo doing stuff and it's gonna be real bad around here unless we take a stand and then he just fucking shoots them all in the street and that's really it you know what i mean like they really don't give a shit but in this case the wife of this engineer ends up showing up on a video saying that the townsfolk vigilantes have now kidnapped El Tequilero's mother. 
these motherfuckers went and stole the drug lord's mom and kidnapped her to get this dude released and like some of these other people released that they accused of supporting the other thing. If that isn't one of the coolest fucking things that I have ever heard in my life, I don't know what is. Like, you want to fucking try to terrorize a town and they're like, fuck you, bitch. We're going to go steal your mom. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't really end there. It actually gets a little better. So not only do they steal this drug lord's mom, they go around the town and they kidnap, I think it said, 20 different people related to this dude's gang, and they kidnap them too. So they have like 20, 21 people, including the drug lord's mom, held captive, demanding the release of the prisoners that he took, or that they were going to kill his mom and kill his gang. Now, if it was just his gang, I don't think that they probably would give a shit too much, but like... Even, like, a drug lord, like, has, like, a soft spot in his heart for his mom. But kudos, like, a mother to these freaking people in Mexico who decided to stand up to this drug lord and steal the mom. That, I, that blew my mind. That is why I had to talk about this here. I couldn't even believe the article when I read it, and I had to go and verify it. Like, I will definitely post the article up on the blog, thecrazytown.com. And you need to go check this out. It is ridiculous. Best part of the whole story, they ended up releasing the engineer and some other people. And then they, and the best part about after that, they gave the mom back and they gave back the, gave back the gang members. Like it wasn't even like a ploy and they still shot the mom. It was like, really, we'll give you back these people, but let our people go. Now, the only thing I have to say about this is, yeah, they got their people back, but, don't you think the drug lord's kind of pissed off at him right now? And you know he's not just going to let his mom go back to her house. So what's stopping him from now either hunting down and killing all of these people or kidnapping the same people and then like torturing them and recording it and sending it to their families and then they can't get to his mom. So what kind of leverage are they going to have? So I guess I'll have to try to keep an eye on the name of that sound or uh, name of that town, Toto Lapan. And see if I see anything else about this El Tequila Row guy, like, killing all these people that stole his mom in retaliation to him being an asshole. So, I mean, that's really it. That was a really short blurb that I wanted to touch on. I thought that was a really cool fucking story. So go to the blog, check out the article if you're interested, because it's a, it's kind of a feel-good story in a weird, twisted, dark kind of way. But that is about all the time that I have for this episode of the Crazy Town Podcast. I do want to thank you all for listening again to this fourth episode of the podcast. It's very awesome that anyone is checking this out. I do want you to give me any sort of feedback that you have, whether it's future show topics, whether it's how much of this sucks, whether you like it, whether you think it's neat, whatever. I do want any of that that you can possibly give me. Please send any emails to crazytownpodcast at gmail.com. We are on Twitter at the crazy town pod, not podcast, just at the crazy town pod. Our website and blog is thecrazytown.com. And as always, you can see us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the crazy town podcast. I hope that you enjoyed this show. Thank you so much for listening. Once again, my name is Jonas, and I am out. <laughs>